So as you know, this past weekend was the weekend of VidCon 2014. And sadly, I was not able to attend this year like I was last year. Last year was the most amazing experience of my entire life. Sadly, now I'm 3,000 miles away, so it is a little bit difficult to get out there at this point in my life. Since VidCon 2014 has passed and VidCon 2015 is in the near future, within the next 360-ish days, I'm gonna give you my best advice for VidCon 2015. If you want to make a great first impression, stalk your favorite YouTuber at VidCon. I saw a million and one fangirls following Shane Dawson around everywhere. Not just the convention center, but the Hilton Hotel as well. It was just past the Starbucks. And oh my goodness, he looked so happy. If you checked out Evan Ettinger's daily vlogs from VidCon this year, you will see the same thing happening to Mr. Joey Graceffa. And he looked like he was having a blast with security there and everything. Great idea. Follow your favorite YouTubers around like crazy. OMG guys, look, there's Nick Patera, let's get him! No. You should get up at two o'clock in the morning when Starbucks isn't even open to queue up to meet your favorite YouTubers at their meet and greets. I think it's a totally valid concept because you're standing there in the line and they don't open them for a couple more hours. So you're standing there in line, waiting and waiting and missing the entire rest of the convention. I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? Don't pack any of your own snacks. Everything in Anaheim is very affordable. It is, especially if you're on a budget. Get a one park ticket for Disney Day on Sundays. Only go to the park where they're taking the VidCon Disney Day photograph. Coming from someone who has worked at Disneyland themselves, there is nothing very special about both parks. Pick one, they're not much different. Don't spend almost the entire day in the expo hall. It's so lame. There's so much more you could be doing. Don't spend all day just going to panels. Oh my gosh, there's so much you could be doing other than just going to panels all day. You don't need to learn. What are you, a content creator? Psh. The best way to spend VidCon or any other YouTube gathering, like this, with your nose buried in your digital devices all day long, not interacting with other people, and just tweeting about the whole experience the entire time. It's pretty solid to me. Obviously, this is a disclaimer. These are things you should not be doing at VidCon. Yes, you should not stalk your favorite YouTubers. They're people, just like me and you. Yes, do not queue up because it wastes so much time. Unless you're a fan and that's your sole purpose for going to VidCon, then go for it. If you're a content creator, like all of us here on Five Freaking Friends, then you want to experience more VidCon. And that ties into not spending it on your mobile devices the entire time because there's so much more to it and there's so much you can take away from VidCon, so much you can learn and experience. That's what VidCon is, an experience. Do bring your own snacks. I know firsthand that living in Southern California is expensive. You don't wanna be buying food all the time. You wanna maybe limit yourself to one big meal and one small meal a day. Even if you're only there for a day, try to get a park hopper pass at Disneyland. Again, I work there. I know it's a little bit more from the pricey side, but you wanna be able to go back and forth because people are gonna be going to each park and if you just get a one park pass someone you know is gonna have to pull some strings to get you a park hopper pass hey, um who does that sound like lenny len 83 <laughs> that's pretty much it if you're planning on going to vidcon 2015 embrace it go for it make a vidcon bucket list I did. 
I hope you enjoyed the rest of your Monday, whatever's left of it. Mine's almost over, sadly. So friends, until next week, hearts ah and DFTBA. Bye.